Okay, so now that we know how to give each user a cookie so that they can uh, keep their login status throughout our site, we need to actually tell them some way, in some way that they're logged into the site. Because right now, all we have in our functions is just a way to give the users the basic HTML so that the page displays correctly. Uh, so what we're going to start by doing is make a function called logged in. Now in the past, we've had functions that will echo stuff out and that's about it. This function is actually going to act as a variable. It's going to return information the same way a variable would, even though that information will only be a true or a false based on whether or not they are logged in. So we're going to start by making a variable called username, and we can access a cookie just by accessing it as if it's in an array. So cookie tutorial username with a hyphen. And that's how we would get the username cookie. And we'll do the same thing with the password cookie. And now we want to query and see if this user is, if they exist. Because people can set, uh, can set cookies to be whatever they want. So we can't just check if the cookie itself exists. So we're going to fetch array a query, my SQL query. And we're going to select the ID of the user because we just want the user's ID. And this will be for use later. Um, we won't actually use it right now. Um, yeah. So we're going to select the query from users where the username equals the username variable and the hash password equals the hash password variable. Now, again, this is the cookie that stores a password is in hashed form so we don't have to worry about uh, dehashing or rehashing anything so we're going to set a global so that this number can be used anywhere we're gonna set a global called user ID and then set the user ID that to query ID let's try typing it right sorry I'm making a few typos today and so now we can access the user ID from anywhere. However, let's just at the top of the file, let's set that to zero in case that uh, we don't get anything. User ID equals zero. Now, the global here is important because when you're in a function, you normally would not be able to access variables that are outside of that function. But if you type global before the variable, just to tell the function, I guess, that the variable exists outside the function, you can use it. So that will be universally accessible um, and settable. So now we're going to do another query. I'm just going to use the same variable name because we won't need that first query anymore. And we're going to MySQL query. I'm going to use that count method that I was telling you about. Um, from users. And this is just going to be the same as the query above it. Now the count method I should probably just add is generally faster than the uh, uh, selecting certain data and then using MySQL num rows. It's useful if you have already, ha if you have to do the query to the database anyway, you should use uh, MySQL num rows since that will avoid two queries in general. But if you just want a number of rows, you should stick with uh, count. So we're going to say if we can query and we get the count. And if we get one row, because remember, we want uh, only one user to be returned. We want to return true, else we want to return false. What that says is when you get to a return statement, that means stop doing whatever the function is doing and return this value. And as I said before, the function will be acting as a variable. So basically, if we, if we were to think of this as a variable, return true means set this variable equal to true, whereas this would set it equal to false, and that's a typo. You don't have to just do true and false. You can also return as text string. You can return even another function if you wanted to. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to keep it at true and false now. So now that we've set up this function, we want to actually use it on our page. So let's just go up to the uh, top of our body here. And I'm just going to copy something in here. Or actually, I can, I'll type it out for you. We're going to give a div with a style and again, I'm not going to focus on style. This is probably going to look pretty ugly, but I just want to give it a separate background color so that we know what it is. 
Not sure if that's blue or red. I don't, I don't always remember my function colors. Now again, we don't have PHP active right now since this is just HTML, so I'm going to open a PHP tag there. And I'm going to say if logged in. So this function will return true or false based on uh, whether or not the user is logged in. So we can use that just as we would any other variable. Now if you want, you can use if logged in equals to true. However, if you just leave it like that, it will work as true and false anyway. So if they're logged in, we're going to display a message that says you are logged in as and your name and give them an option to log out. However, if they're not logged in, we're going to give them a message. I'm just going to do this first. Say you are not logged in. And then say why not H. Let's say just to a single quote. Why not login.php. Another typo. I'm on a roll today. Why not log in? And this will give them a link to the login page if they already have an account. Or register, or I'm going to have it say register here. So this is going to link to register.php or register. And it's a question, so don't forget to end it with a question mark. That's one of my pet peeves on websites is bad grammar. I'm just going to tab that. However, if they are logged in, let's go back up here and we want to echo logged in as. I'm going to end the quote, put a dot there to indicate to PHP that we want to join this together. And we're going to access the cookie, which is tutorial username. So this will echo out their name. So we can say logged in as video guy or whatever I entered before. I don't remember. And then we're going to give them an option to log out. Now, if you remember, the logout page we designed sends them to login.php, but checks to see if get logout. So we want to pass logout equals to let's just say equal to one it doesn't really matter what it equals since we just check if it ex if they passed anything so we can even pass logout equals to false it'll still work so just keep that in mind that passing different things will not matter which also uh, prevents your users from trying to do anything and just to sh give you a proof of concept that we can access our user ID from here we're gonna just type that in and just at the end of the of our string there However, we can't yet because we did not define it as global. So I'm just going to do that right up here. This does not have to be right next to the variable, just so you know. You can enter it anywhere. You can enter it at the beginning of the function if you'd like. I know some people like doing that so that they know what's global right there. Other people may like it right near the variable so they can remember if it's made global or not. So now if we load up this page, and actually this is any page since uh, this is part of our template, I have a typo. Uh, let me see what that is. Line oh, that's right. I should have closed this PHP um, because I accidentally opened two of them. And hold, hold on one second. Okay, we just had a slight problem there. Um, this didn't pop up when I was testing the site, but uh, apparently it gave me an error that said uh, not a valid MySQL result resource. So what I changed down here is Instead of doing all this query if the user is not logged in, we're just going to say if there is a username and there is a password, if both of those cookies exist, then we want to do all of this checking. However, if it doesn't exist, then we just want to return false since that means they're not logged in. So now you can see that since we're not logged in right now, it'll say you are not logged in. Why not log in or register? So I'm going to log in. And I hit I'm, I'm doing great on these typos today. Uh, oh, forgot a semicolon up here. And that was actually the last video, I believe. I don't remember. I yep, I <laughs> forgot to end my div up here, so now the whole page is turning green. So that would be right here. So now if we load that up, that's what I wanted. So if I want to lock I want to log in as video guy, and my password is password. I believe it's been a while. So, getting that same error. Hold on. Okay, I figured out what I was doing wrong. See this column? I said username. That was really called name in the database. I, my mouse just moved. So, that's why I was getting an error before. So, you don't have to do all this, although it's generally better since you can avoid two additional database queries, especially if your site is of the higher traffic kind. And I'm still getting an error. 
I sorry I make typos a lot. I think count count has to be capitalized, that's why. And it has to be spelled right. It's not the worst way I could misspell it, I suppose. Forgot to put a quote here. Let's hope this is the last typo I make today, because this is really getting annoying. Now it works. We can get logged in as video guy, which is my name, and an option to log out. And this is the user ID, I'm user one. I think I'm the only user that's in there. So I'm just gonna hit log out just to show you that it works. And we get back to the home page and it says you are not logged in. So in the next video, we're going to expand our site a little further and add some new pages.